everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today courtesy of Couture Crochet's Kickstarter project of hand-spun single sheep braid yarns. And you can see the link for this Kickstarter project below in the information. Um, she generously sent me three different breeds of wool that she hand-spun into yarn. And the breeds are Devon, um, Texel, some gorgeous Merino, and some Wesleydale. And we thought that it would be interesting to see whether or not different breeds of wool take up food coloring based dyes differently. And this is the basis of our experiment today. But I decided to add a little something else to these four breeds of yarn. Before I started dyeing, I put each of the couture crochet spun yarns into a little butterfly. I decided to also add two different commercial yarns to this experiment. A wool acrylic nylon blend and 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And then I also dipped into my own collection and quickly spun um, a few different samples just to add some other breeds into the mix. And I decided to even add a non-sheep yarn. This, which was generously given to me um, by someone I met on Ravelry, is 100% dog fur. And although it might look like it came from my own sweet little American Eskimo dog Indy, I tagged each of these samples with different colored or different combinations of paper clips to help me distinguish which one is which after the dyeing happens because I'm going to do this in one pot. Um, but before any dyeing starts, I want to pre-soak all of these samples in just plain water and I'm going to let them soak overnight so that way they truly get saturated and I'm not tempted to start this dyeing experiment too soon. In this pot I have six cups of water and I'm going to add two tablespoons approximately <laughs> of white vinegar. I have not yet turned the stove on because I want to mix the dye and add the yarn as I heat up the water because we are trying to get an even as even of coverage as we can in each of the single dye yarns. And I'm going to use just my standard McCormick's food coloring. I'm choosing to use blues and greens because we don't want the to break the dye and um, yellow and blue tend to absorb around similar rates. Um, about six drops of blue. Nine drops of green. That's about 15 drops total. I'm going to add Another two drops of blue. And stir this up to mix the dye. And now, while this is still cool and still without any heat, I'm going to start adding my yarn. I'm doing this cool because I don't want the ones that I add first to have any advantage in the dyeing process over the ones that I add later because we want to compare how well each of these different colors dye. Make sure they're all submerged and now 
I am going to turn the heat on to low and slowly start raising the temperature, making sure they're all submerged. I'm going to bring this to a soft simmer. So we've come to a boil and I'm now going to reduce the heat even further so that way the bubbles are not quite as aggressive. 10 minutes after we've started boiling the color in the dye bath is starting to clear. So I'm going to turn off the heat on the stove entirely and let this sit and cool and so any additional dye can absorb to the end. The water is still a little warm but it's cool enough that I can reach my hand in comfortably. So I'm going to start gently removing our samples. And I'm going to let them finish cooling before I rinse them in with lukewarm water and dish soap and then I will hang them up to dry. Before I separate the single braid yarns back onto their labels, I wanted to point out a few things. First, clearly all of them took up color and you know, which we can see that they're all like this really nice blue-green. And then also the commercial yarns do look pretty different from the hand spun. And, but there is some very subtle variation amongst the hand spun yarns. These three right here have taken up a bit more color than the rest of these hand spun yarns. And so the three hand spuns that I said that took up the most color are the Devon, the Texel, and the mystery wool. So here we have it. The results of dyeing 10 different breeds of yarn. And beyond the subtle differences that I've already pointed out, there are a few other things I want to point out. One is that you can dye dog fur with food coloring. So that's really cool. Um, the next is that of these two commercial yarns, the wool acrylic nylon blend took up a lot of color, even though it's only 15% wool. And this took up a lot more color than the 20% wool, 80% acrylics I've done in the past. And so I think what this means is that, and which is something that I've read, is that nylon um, can be dyed with food coloring. I think that there are some differences between the yarns that isn't necessarily just about their breed. There is the amount of twist that is in each of them that can affect how much color has absorbed. Uh, potentially the amount of oil left in the fibers, which could vary from breed to breed, could affect the amount of dye that's picked up. And also, the commercial yarn was white beforehand and some of the rest of these had more of a yellow ecru type color which also of course affects the final color. So I'm happy to know that all of these different beautiful breeds of wool take up dye extremely well. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I've had a lot of fun with this first time dyeing hand spun yarns. I really want to thank Couture Crochet for the inspiration for this project and I encourage you to check out her Kickstarter project and if that has been completed then to go ahead and check out her Etsy store for some fantastic single breed hand spun yarns.